hi, this is Yomo from Delvin Gear PvP. The first chapter of my warrior guide is about multi-mob tanking. Trash matters. It consumes more time than the bosses do, and it's your responsibility to guide your group safe and fast through the trash. To do this, you need first to see the mana guys of your healers to pull or not to pull after a task to on the bars, and second to bind drag items to your keyboard, so you don't have to click them, it's simply too slow. You should mark every move, even as the GPS forgets over and over again what the third and fourth GPS target is, and even if nothing will be crowd controlled. That's because, with red icons you can easily see what ability hit which map, and that is important for multi-map tanking. Multi-map tanking is challenging, but if you keep some rules in mind you can easily tank big packs with 6 or more mobs without card control. You want sufficient threat on every mob and good threat on the focus type. To achieve this, you have to use your area of attack abilities, cleave and thunderclap. But spamming this button like a mad monkey does not work. You need to find targets that are not hit by thunderclap, cleave, and fix the threat with shield slam, revenge, or deep state. A common mistake is to build threat on your focus target until it dies. But enough threat is enough. You can ignore a mob long before it dies to build threat on the critical targets. Here is an example. The main DPS target is fixed by a shield gun, and the second one, Skull, is fixed by two cleavers and one deep state. Every mob has sufficient threat to use the clap and one cleave each. Three and you have higher threat than shield because my cleave critted. So I proceed to cleave the DPS target plus the target that needs to be fixed, the shield. After some cleavers, the fewest threat is on Tree Angel, and to fix it, I use a couple of cleavers and the Devastate. A Shield Slam on Skull is enough threat for the second focus target, and I only have to cleave spam until everything is cleared. Don't be afraid to use cooldowns on Trash, like I used the last stand right here. If Sheet Wall is a way to prevent a wipe, you should use it, even at Trash. Sometimes things just go wrong. If it happens, don't panic. Use cooldowns to prevent the wipe. If you cannot save every player, save healers first and DPS second. In situations like this, I often ignore the DPS target until someone draws aggro and use my taunt as a high threat ability, followed by a shield slam the mob is often fixed on me until it dies. You can also use this technique at normal trash to give you more time to fix threat on other targets. Additionally, taunt can be used as a threat fixer, even if you still have aggro. If you know a mob dies within the taunt duration, you can taunt and then ignore the mob and proceed to build threat on other targets. Add on I highly recommend for trash tanking is Mantan Glove. Mouse over target's target and is very good for big trash packs and happy AoE DPS. I wouldn't want to tank without it. Here you can see one of my best tries, it's 1850 TPS. Warlock can start TPS as soon as he reaches the position and can do 4000 TPS without pulling aggro. Boss tanking is quite simple. 
The main idea is to keep the global cooldown spinning, keep your selected G and boss attack speed in mind, predict the incoming rage and use heroic strike accordingly. Basically, it's just a 6 second cycle, shield slam, revenge, divas take, divas take, plus heroic strike for all your excess rage. The difficulty in maximizing TPS is heroic strike. If you get to 100 rage, you lost TPS it could be extra heroic strikes. If you heroic strike too often, your rage starts. You cannot use special abilities like shield slam and lose massive amounts of TPS. Both cases must not happen to achieve maximum TPS. There are only a few other things that increase your TPS through play. One thing is to take crashing blows for extra rage. I often use this as palm rage, but beware, if you do a cheap work afterwards, the next attack might kill you. The one I recommend for boss tanking is Grim Reaper, which shows why players and tanks died. Do they get parry hazard crush? Do they use a slab? Or does the tank did not use last stand? You can see everything, and can make sure that it does not happen again. Another light on is Demon, which shows Raiden Dots. Especially if off tanks do get the boss for you, you can easily see if a debuff is missing or is fine. The third light on is Annoying Black Reminder, who will never forget the command and shout again. The interface should give all information you need at a special location. Most tanks, like the mid bottom of the interface for this, are like the upper left. I can see target to target, rage, cooldowns, debuffs and health in the mod. Here you see my different gears for trash, aggression rates or farm rates. They are all at tier 6 level. Stat priorities are different for tanks at lower tiers. At tier 4 level, you need, for example, all the health and armor you can get, and maybe some expertise. All three stats help to survive worst case scenarios, which often lead to tank death. Your main goal is survive first, and as avoidance does not guarantee to survive first, it is uninformed. At tier 5 level, you have good health and armor to begin with, and can start to stack some avoidance. But health is still king in tier 5 raids. At tier 6 level, you can easily stack avoidance while keep your health consistent. You don't have one here, you should have multiple and exchangeable powerful pieces for health, avoidance and threat. As single powerful threat pieces, I use the Shard of Content, Growth of Enforcement and the Suleiman Chef for 3 hit jams or 56 hit rating on one piece. Enough PvE, let's go to Battleground and cheat slam some faces.